My name is Greg Bland. I'm the Director of Environmental Services. In previous videos, Brian Schuler introduced the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program and Phil Glenn introduced the New Markets Tax Credit Program. Both are great funding programs and have many checklist items that need to be addressed. It is best to get started early on checklist items. So today, I'm going to walk you through one of these, environmental reporting. I will give you a brief explanation of the types of environmental reporting that are required and what entities are requiring this information. Often, environmental reporting will be an application requirement for LIHTC projects, and other times it is a funding requirement for both LIHTC and new markets. When planning your reporting needs, the first thing to think about is what type of funding is being used for this project. If the project is being funded by the LIHTC or new markets program, then a phase one environmental site assessment referred to as an ESA, is needed. A Phase 1 ESA will almost always be a requirement of the LIHTC and New Markets investor and is more frequently a requirement within the LIHTC application in some states. If NAHASDA funds or other program-specific funds are going to be used, then both a Phase 1 ESA and an environmental assessment completed for HUD will be needed. A HUD EA is generally a requirement when any federal funding is used on a new construction or rehabilitation housing project. Let's start with the Phase 1 ESA. A Phase 1 ESA is a report prepared for a LIHTC or New Markets transaction, which identifies potential or existing environmental contamination liabilities. The analysis, often called an ESA, typically addresses both the land and the physical improvements to the property. However, a Phase 1 ESA can include collection of physical samples or chemical analysis if out-of-scope considerations are included in the contract. The guidelines for conducting a Phase 1 ESA are set by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's All Appropriate Inquiry Guidelines, which is a process of evaluating a property's environmental conditions and assessing the likelihood of any contamination. ASTM International, referred to as ASTM, developed a standard operating procedure based on the EPA's all appropriate inquiries. This standard is called ASTM 1527-13. The guidelines were developed as liability protections for landowners, purchasers, or partnerships conducting real estate transactions under the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, or CERCLA. A Phase 1 ESA consists of many things. But the main aspects are a historical database search for the property and neighboring properties, a site reconnaissance or site visit, interviews with current and if available past property owners, and completion of what is called the All Appropriate Inquiry or AAI questionnaire. Now for the environmental assessment, referred to as an EA. The National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, requires federal agencies to integrate environmental values into their decision-making processes. Federal agencies must consider the environmental impacts of the proposed action and reasonable alternatives to those actions. It is a decision-making tool used under U.S. environmental law to describe the positive and negative environmental effects of a proposed action. There are several variations of the NEPA EA, but the most common form of EA is the HUD version. An EA includes the following. Purpose and need of proposed action, description of area affected, alternatives to the proposed action, analysis of threatened or endangered species, air and water quality impacts, soil and engineering considerations, impacts to historical and cultural sites, social and economic impacts, and cost of analysis of alternatives. Where a phase one ESA is a look at historical environmental concerns under ASTM E1527-13, an EA or Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, is a forward-looking document that evaluates the project's future impact. The first thing to think about when completing an EA is the type of construction. Is this new construction on previously undeveloped land, or is this a rehabilitation project in an existing development? Next, consider if a previous EA has been completed for the site. If a HUD EA has been completed for the project site, then generally what is required is called a categorical exclusion. Here's what that document looks like. If this is new construction on a previously undeveloped land, then a full HUD EA will be required. Many tribal offices will need to participate, and these may include historical preservation, environmental protection, tribal utilities, natural resources, fish and wildlife, and the community. 
It is important to get started on a HUD EA as soon as possible, as these reports can oftentimes take up to 60 days to be completed. As you can see, there are a few factors to consider when determining the types of environmental reporting necessary for your project. But the most important thing to remember is that these reports are different, and one cannot satisfy the other. So start planning early on in the development process to determine which report or reports will be required for your project. If you would like any clarification or more in-depth look at these reports, feel free to contact us, and we would be happy to walk you through any of these reports.